Hello everybody, thank you for being here. My name is Axel schemler Santos, and I will present a paper that we have written with Philippe Essling that is called Challenges in Machine Learning Creative Generative Models, a Divergence Maximization Perspective. Before presenting the objectives of this paper, I would like to first introduce the motivation behind this work. The increasing amount of machine learning based models in the past decade now propose several algorithms to generate musical content that ground their generation on reproducing a target dataset. As machine learning models are quite general, the addressed domain are numerous, that can be raw audio generation, spectral generation, or symbolic generation, most of the time MIDI like. However, while these increasingly complex modular systems flourish in what we can call broadly technical use cases, their use in musical creations, such as improvisation, sound design, or composition, is still marginal. While the possible reasons for this underuse are numerous, our work focuses on a specific problem that is the lack of novelty of machine learning generations. Indeed, this more of the same nature is to a great extent an intrinsic problem due to the design of the training paradigm that we propose to dissect and discuss. Hence, our proposition is twofold. First, we will give perspective and theoretical insights on the consequence of maximizing the divergence to the original data rather than minimizing it in order to stimulate extrapolative behaviors. Then, we will discuss how concepts for computational creativity can be applied to model-oriented evaluation of the model artifacts and how they can be incorporated in training in order to perform formative creative evaluation and optimization. First, let's dissect generative models in three different components. The data X, the conditioning variables C, that can be either conditioning, free variables or multimodal inputs, and the parameters of the generative model theta. For example, the RAVE model, based on an encoder-decoder architecture, infers high-level synthesis parameters that it can invert back to recover the original waveform. Another example is the MIDI-VIE, that generates symbolical musical data based on three parallel generators that takes as input both data and the current style. Considering that a dataset is distributed among an underlying distribution P of X, the generator is trained to optimize its parameters in order to match this data distribution. This optimization is based on the definition of a reconstruction criterion that we can generalize as a divergence D between the generative distribution learned by the model and the data distribution. Of course, this divergence will depend on the model. While the minimization of this divergence is very effective to teach the model how to reproduce the data, it naturally hinders the model to generate content that is not present in the original distribution. Such limitations have motivated artists, mostly in the image domain, to search ways of hijacking models in order to enforce the generation of novel content. This field, recently called active divergence, gathers an ensemble of techniques that aims to make the generative distribution go away from the original data. Network blending, network bending, cross-domain fine-tuning, or loss hacking are examples of such techniques. In the music domain, few attempts have been made to bend audio generation models. If I may, I invite you to listen to my piece Alethea, accepted in the music program of IEMC 2022, that attempts to translate such techniques in composition. Hence, there is an interest in the artistic community to extend the generative abilities of pre-trained or untrained generative models. Despite the great interest of active divergence techniques, these methods are not embedded in training and may benefit of being included in the optimization process. Reformulating the question, how to push the generative models into such extensional cases, where the objective is not to reproduce existing data, but rather to transform and extend it. Such optimization setups may help these algorithms to be deemed creative. However, this last sentence is kind of paradoxical, as machine learning has to be grounded on existing data. Furthermore, the huge computational power of these models can also become an unsurpassable pitfall, as the good results obtained with machine learning mostly rely on overfitting the data. This property can prevent them to retrieve analytical factors of variation and hence to extrapolate in a convincing way. After this disclaimer, let us try to invert this training paradigm. We saw that the original formulation, based on the minimization of the divergence D, enforces the model to stick to the original data distribution. Reversely, let us think about the effect of inverting this objective and rather try to maximize the divergence between generations and the original data. We will call this new objective the divergence maximization objective. Of course, the first trick induced by this maximization is what we call catastrophic forgetting, where the learned divergent distribution U forgets totally about the data. While this could be limited in restricted generators, the high number of parameters of machine learning generative models make this risk much like here. Hence, 
some additional criteria may be required to have a hand on the amount of divergence. An interesting criteria that will allow us to delineate two different setups would be to measure the support of the generative distribution. By example, this could be made by obtaining the convex hull of generated examples or a high probability threshold measure. Provided the measure of the distribution support, we can distinguish two extreme cases. The extrapolation case, where the original distribution is a subset of the divergent distribution, and the transfer case, where the intersection between original and divergent distribution is null. Hence, provided the calculability of such support, we can monitor the training to follow one of the two setups. Another possible pitfall that depends on the symmetry of the chosen divergence can come from converging to degenerate distributions, as shown in this example. Indeed, we can imagine two different divergent distributions, u min and u max, that can have a similar divergence to the original distribution. However, while the second extrapolates accurately the data, the first can degenerate to output only a few examples. Hence, the symmetry of the divergence is also very important to choose the right extrapolation setup. Besides symmetry, it is also important to differentiate between two different ways of measuring this divergence that depend on the model architecture. The first way, that we call pointwise divergence, measures the intimewise divergence between every example, such as variational autoencoders. The second way, that we call aggregated divergence, measures the overall divergence within a batch of samples. It is suspected that the latter is more likely to diverge from the original data, as can be shown by artifacts from generative adversarial networks. However, it would be interesting to have intermediate solutions. To this end, let us introduce meta-learning, a training framework based on splitting the optimization in two different phases, the inner loop and the outer loop. The inner loop optimizes a precise task, drawn from a task distribution, for example, reconstructing a subset of a dataset. The outer loop, at the meta-level, rather optimizes how the algorithm learns across different tasks. Meta-learning, by providing the model introspection about its own training process, has been successfully applied in complex machine learning subfields, such as few-shot learning, transfer learning, domain adaptation, and continual learning. To see how maximum divergence could benefit from meta-learning, let us consider our overall data distribution as a mixture of several datasets. Suppose that we only got one dataset, we can maximize the divergence of our divergent distribution to this single dataset, while minimizing the divergence to the overall distribution. Both objectives can be optimized by maximizing this ratio, that we call the maximum divergence meta-objective. Now, suppose we got a collection of m different datasets. We can optimize the MDMO of a given dataset of index i, consisting in our inner loop. Our outer loop could then drive how much our divergent distribution deviates for every sub-dataset, optimizing mystery coefficients, and incorporate the criteria presented previously. Furthermore, datasets can be added dynamically incorporated generated artifacts in the training process. Hence, adopting a meta-learning approach could allow you to learn in the inner loop and learn how to divert from them while providing higher harder criteria in the outer loop. It would also allow us to learn on few examples, translating from entire data and central approaches to the notion of inspiring sets important in computational creativity. Furthermore, it could also provide intermediate learning setups between fully aggregated and pointwise divergences, and adjusting dynamically outliers by setting the mixture parameters omega as hyperparameters in the outer loop. Finally, we can also extend our maximum divergence objective to other parts of the model. As we exposed earlier, most generative models can be split in three different variables. The generated data x, the conditioning variable z, here we will just keep the latent variables, and the model parameters theta. Can we gain by extending maximum divergence to latent and model parameters? To be able to extend this criterion, we will assume the data distribution as either the underlying distribution of an existing dataset, or the generative distribution of a pre-trained model. Let's start with the latent domain. Some models, such as encoder-decoder architectures, also have an underlying distribution in their latent variables p of z, defined by latent positions corresponding to the existing samples of the data. It has been shown that, providing an overgrown capacity, some high-capacity models generate artifacts that do not belong to the original distribution. However, locating these artifacts is generally difficult, as the dimensionality of the latent spaces can be doubtingly high. Let's think about how we could use maximum divergence in the latent domain. Providing an exploration model that would generate latent parameters, the maximum divergence criterion could be used to locate unused zones of the latent space that do not correspond to any example of the base dataset. This process, that we could name automated latent exploration, could then be interesting to locate the unexpected artifacts of a pre-trained model. 
Now, let's think about applying this objective to model parameters. Applying maximum divergence to a pre-trained model would logically provide a similar model with altered parameters, whose amount of deviation is given by the divergence amount. This process can be done in several ways, for example, stochastic rewriting, consisting in random weight alteration, or model transfer, retraining specific layers of a generator with another dataset. A first approach could be to directly apply the maximum divergence criterion in the model's parameters, providing degenerated models with shared latent spaces. However, a more interesting application could involve different pre-trained models, equivalently to the sub-datasets involved earlier. Let us consider M generative models with similar architectures constituted of successive neural layers and our target different model. We can then apply the meta-learning maximum divergence objective in the parameter domain, where we diverge from specific layers or specific models in order to control more precisely the desired artifacts. The layers and the models could also be set up by the outer loop, providing greater introspection to the divergent model. This can be seen as diverging from generalized model interpolations and could be of great interest for controlling artifact generation at a higher level. To summarize, the first objective, maximum divergence, could allow to directly address novelty from machine learning generative models and to integrate such objectives in the learning process. The meta-learning maximum divergence framework could allow to drive the divergence according to domain-driven constraints, but also to learn with your data, allowing to be applicable in interactive processes. However, because of the nature of such criteria, additional constraints have to be added to avoid several pitfalls, such as catastrophic forgetting, controlling exploration versus transfer setups, and carefully monitoring the divergence symmetry. A last question remains. How could such training frameworks relate to existing notions from computational creativity from a model perspective? First, let's think about what could be conceptual spaces in machine learning generative models. Wiggins' creative systems include a conceptual space C, subset of a superset U, a restriction function R, a set of transformation rules M, and an evaluation function E. In generative models, we can set our conceptual space C as being either model parameters or conditioning variables the restriction function R as a decision function driven by the data, and the evaluation criterion as our loss. With these definitions, let's think about what could be conceptual spaces for the three buttons types of creativity, explorative, combinatorial, and transformative. Regarding explorative creativity, it can be either in the latent domain Z or in the parameter domain theta. However, the dauntingly large number of dimensions of the parameter domain would prevent to directly explore, such that for explorative creativity, the conceptual space would be logically the latent domain. Regarding combinatorial creativity, it could be also either in the latent domain or in the parameter domain. In the latent domain, this problem has been widely investigated in machine learning. Three different axes have been taken, whether conditioning and modulation, disentangled latent spaces, or explainable AI. In the parameter domain, combinatorial creativity would rather consist in model hybridation or model interpolation, that is directly addressed by our framework. Hence, for compositional creativity, our conceptual space can be both Z or theta. Regarding transformative creativity, it is a little more peculiar to define. Arguing that transformative creativity can be defined as an explorative creativity in the superset U, transformative creativity in deep generative models requires the existence of a meta-level. Hence, models can be deemed to have transformative creativity if they can modify their own state, hence requiring distinct inner and outer loop, requiring a meta-learning optimization scheme. Finally, we shall also discuss the riches empirical criteria for creativity, value, novelty, and surprise. Indeed, we can assess that classical machine learning optimization setups foster value and typicality, that is the inverse of novelty, because of the minimization of the divergence. Reversely, maximum divergence setup maximizes novelty, but possibly also at the expense of value. Hence, monitoring value in maximum divergence may require specific evaluations tailored for a given creative context. Regarding surprise, it is difficult to delineate from novelty. We can propose to define novelty as general novelty, while surprise can be the amount of novelty for a single realization accordingly to a given context. Some bridges can be made with machine learning in three different perspectives. The first, Bayesian surprise, uses the difference between prior and posterior distributions to promote unexpected probability zones in the generative model. In the second, Composer audience architectures organizes an adversarial game between a generator and a predictor and forcing the first to surprise the second. Finally, as many generative models rely on a stochastic component epsilon, 
Evaluating or promoting the effect of stochasticity in the obtained result may be a good way to monitor or have a hand of the amount of surprise of the generated outcomes. To summarize, we propose two different objectives that can be applied in the data, parameter, or latent domain to obtain generation that deviate from the original data distribution. Furthermore, these objectives can be combined to have a finer definition of the desired outcomes. Of course, this work is still prospective, such that the next step will be to apply these different criteria and evaluate their results in co-creative setups. The aim of this theoretical presentation was also to discuss this objective with the community and to gather the objections that can be made on the proposed framework. Thank you.